Hi everyone, I'm Rachel Tessman from StampYourArtOut.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Andover, Minnesota in the U.S. And today I'm bringing you a pre-recorded online paper crafting class. Because on the date that this is airing, which is November 16th, 2022, I'm on vacation in Vienna, Austria. And it would have been hard for me to do this video live. I hope you enjoy what I have to share today. And if you do, please click the thumbs up and share with your friends and make sure that you're subscribed to my YouTube channel as well. So before you, I have this special box. This indicates that this comes from the kits collection. Stampin' Up! has a, uh, a couple different kits, kit lines, and this one is from the kits collection, which is a line that you can check out in the online store. You can go there and um, preview the kits, see what you want, and make your purchase along with any other Stampin' Up! product that you normally would purchase from the online store. This one is the very, very fun Love Santa Tag Kit. Now, at the time that I am, <laughs> at the time that I'm um, filming this, it's not showing up in the online store. Sometimes kits have done that. They've disappeared and come back. I'm thinking that this one might be gone, but there is the uh, French version of this kit. Now, if you don't speak French, the only thing that's going to get in the way of you wanting this kit is the stamps because there are word stamps in here, right? Um, like on this one, Love Santa, Joy, Merry and Bright, Special Delivery. So I have a plan because I had already created these cards and um, plan to, to share them with you. Um, but I have a plan. So I'm going to bring in a couple other stamp sets that have words in English so that when I give the cards that I'm going to create with this tag kit to other people, um, they can read them. <laughs> I don't speak French. Um, but if you do speak French and you want this kit, currently the French version is in the online store. I, again, as I film this. So I'm hoping on November 16th, as this is airing, that that one and or possibly the English version is available. Anyways, Love Santa Tag Kit. Notice that you can make all of these cute, adorable tags. You, can, you have supplies in here enough to make 12 full tags like this. Three, um, yeah, three of four different kinds, but I'm gonna convert them into cards. And instead of 12 tags, we're gonna get 24 cards out of this kit by adding in some extra card stock. Yes, we can do it. I'm so excited. Let me begin. These are the supplies that you need if you're gonna make the tags. And again, you have three times as many of these because you get to make three of this one, three of this one, three of this one, three of this one. And so I just kind of combine them together. And you can see on the instruction um, pamphlet that um, you know, I've got them matched up pretty darn well here. I think that's what we've got. We also have twine with each, um, each of the tags and these fun little embellishments, these little colored rhinestones. So the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do though is to, if, if you're gonna do it the way that I'm sharing with you today, is you're gonna to wanna to take all those supplies and separate them all out, divide them all out, and you'll discover that you actually get some extra pieces too. So we're gonna put those into the mix and create our cards with those additional pieces. We're gonna grab three of the tags that have these little loop-de-loops at the top and we're gonna trim those off and then we're gonna cut a couple of these in half. And next we're gonna bring in some extra cardstock. You'll need one um, white eight and a half by 11 and three of the crumb cake eight and a half by 11 for every set of 12, um, eight, eight cards that we're going to make. And remember eight times three is 24. We're making 24 cards. I'm just going to show you one of each of those eight, and then you'll multiply that, um, to make your 24 cards. Okay. So let's take this card stock and we're going to score it down the middle at four and a quarter inches. We'll turn it in this direction and we're going to cut it at, oops, sorry, five and a half. And that will give us two white card bases. For this one, we're going to score in this direction at five and a half and cut in this direction at four and a quarter. So that gives us a couple more card bases. So each of these are just a half a sheet of cardstock folded in half, but in the end, you get the same size. 
Okay, it just depends on how you want your card to open. I'm going to do another one that is scored at the five and a half and cut down the middle at four and a quarter. So two of your crumb cakes will go that way and then the other one will go in the same direction as your white. So if we're multiplying all this by three, you're going to need three times three, nine sheets of crumb cake. You'll need three sheets of white and then you'll need an extra of each color for your layering pieces. This is two by five and a half and this is two and a half by five and a half. You'll need this for each set of three. You should be able to get three of these out of one sheet and six of these out of another sheet. Now, if you don't wanna look at crumb cake on the inside of your card, you want a white layer for those crumb cake bases, then you'll need some extra white. I'm gonna cut two of them together and we're gonna to cut to five and a quarter by four. And this is the perfect size for a layer on the inside of your card. So I'm gonna cut six of those for my eight cards that I'm gonna to demonstrate today. So six times three sets would give me 18. 18 divided by four, because you can get four from each sheet, is an additional four and a half sheets of cardstock. So all together, you would need eight and a half sheets of white and 10 sheets of crumb cake. And then of course, you're gonna need some envelopes. So you'll wanna purchase a pack of the basic white medium envelopes and you only need 24 of the 40 that come in the pack. So the first two are very similar to each other. I'm going to go ahead and use my bone folder to give this cardstock base a good crease at the fold. I haven't stamped on the inside of any of my finished card samples, but you could certainly do that before you add your white inside layer. I'm just going to go ahead and do that right now. I can always stamp later, but it is best to stamp on the paper before you add it. Just in case you make a mistake, then you have the flip side as an option. Okay, now for this piece, I am going to wrap some twine around. It's a seven inch piece of twine. I'm gonna wrap it around and tape it to the back. But before I do that, I'm just gonna use it as a guide so I know about how much room I have to stamp a sentiment. And I'm bringing in the Brightest Glow stamp set. I think I'm gonna use All Is Merry and Bright. Because that one is narrow, but it still has a nice full message for it. And I'm bringing in, instead of the Knight of Navy ink spot, just for speed because this takes a little bit longer to use, I'm going to use my full, larger Knight of Navy. Um, so it's a quick tap and stamp. And then I'm just used to my ergonomic blocks. You can use the block that comes in the kit, which is the one I just shared with you. We'll pick that up, ink it up and then we'll stamp it down. And again, I know that I need to adjust it a little bit to the left to make it look centered. Now, if I stamp crooked, I can always flip it over. That looks pretty darn straight to me though. So we'll go ahead and add with a little bit of tape. And I have it positioned a little less than a quarter of an inch away. I'm just adjusting it here. That looks pretty good. So now I can add my adhesive to the back side. And I've also added adhesive to the back side of my half of a tree. I'm going to place these two together down onto the front of my card. I've got the white piece about a quarter of an inch away from the left edge and my tree is right up to the other side, the, white, the right side of that white piece. Oh, and I'm gonna bring it up just a little bit higher just to make it look more centered. And then we can bring in our fun sequins that come in this kit. I've already used up a third of them to make my sample cards, so you're gonna see some missing from here. The Take Your Pick tool is an awesome tool for picking up those rhinestones. You just push and lift. And we're gonna set one right in the middle of the <clears throat> star up here. That's the clear small one. 
And then I also need, and I'm peeking at my finished one over here, <laughs> I need two small pink ones in the centers of these pink ornaments. And I'm going to use a large one on the bottom pink ornament. So there is my finished card. From the kit, when I, you know, with the stamps, if you have this kit already, this is what I chose to do with the stamps that come in the kit. But again, if you don't have the English version of this kit and you need English words, you know, you can bring, bring out any, um, any Christmas sentiments, really. The second one is the other half of the tree. I'm bringing in the yellow rectangle and I accidentally already added my <laughs> my twine to this but we will need to stamp on it so um, let's just go ahead and add these to the front of the card and we'll do the stamping right on to the paper and pray that everything works out <laughs> so let's bring this a quarter of an inch to the right side the right edge and the tree again put right up against it and centered before we add the rhinestones, we'll do the stamping. I've already got the center uh, or the inside layer here. And for this particular um, card, I think I'm going to use Seasons Greetings and we're going to do some masking. So what I mean by masking is we're just covering up a portion of this stamp that we don't want to get inked up. And I'm going to ink up the word Seasons. And then I'm going to peel the tape away. And I'm going to stamp it down onto this yellow piece. And hopefully we'll get in the middle. If not, we can use the white side. Oh, that's pretty close. I'm going to clean the stamp off. And now I'm going to cover up the word seasons, or at least the part of the word that's close to the word greetings. And we're going to ink up just the greetings portion. And peel this tape away and we're going to stamp that down onto the white section oh <laughs> got pretty close on that I'm just going to shove this over a bit and then what we can do is add dimensionals to the back side of this word And we can even come a little into the tree area just for kind of an artistic flavor. <laughs> and now we'll add our rhinestones. I used two large rhinestones that were pink, two small rhinestones that were pink, and one small white or clearish one towards the top. Almost kind of has a purple glow to it. I don't know. It looks white, it looks purple, it depends on how you angle it. So there we have our second card, the one that I did with the um, kit stamps that came in English. <laughs> Say Merry Christmas. Now the nice thing about these stamps versus the red rubber is you can see through them. So now I introduce to you Santa's delivery stamp set because there's a few images in this kit that have to do with Santa. We're going to use the Ho 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 sentiment, this one here, mounted onto my block, and we're going to stamp that in the center of this circle. And that's the ease with clear stamps. So if you have a sentiment set that uh, for Christmas that has clear stamps in it, it's going to be a little bit more helpful for when you need to stamp on those smaller pieces. Let's go ahead and finish off that third card then. We're using the Santa for it. So again, you could stamp some words from the stamp set on the inside or even some of those fun images. I used 16 inches of twine on this card. 
of course added him flat but put this guy up on a dimensional which you get plenty in the kit but you may want to invest in a few more and we do have those sold separately in the online store so that's that version and the version with the stamp set from the kit is the love santa word right here if you do end up using a stamp set though that has the um, red rubber it might be helpful to invest in a positioning tool like our Stamparatus. So I've got this Joy stamp here. And remember, in your kit, you punch out your pieces. So I'm just going to lay this down here onto my Stamparatus platform. And I'm going to position my word Joy within one of these rectangles and see if I can get it to stamp inside. We may have to adjust the rectangles, but for now, let's give it a little test run. So I'm going to ink up the word joy. I'm going to stamp it down. And I'm just going to peek by pulling this away. That looks pretty good. So I think I'm going to go with that look. I could have adjusted it if I needed to, but I'm now going to bring in some of these small rectangles. And I'm going to go ahead and stamp one in full ink. You know what, I might have to, no, it'll stay there. It'll stay there, right? It'll stay there. I could use some temporary adhesive behind it maybe, but I think we'll be able to do it. There we go. There's our first joy. Ta-da. I want to stamp that one though three more times, but for the second and third time, I'm sorry, for the, yeah, for the second, third, and fourth time, I want to have a lighter version of that, um, of that color. So, so I'm going to go ahead and stamp this twice before laying my um, second rectangle inside. So I'm going to ink up the word joy. I'm going to stamp it. I'm going to stamp it again. And this time I think it will get a lighter version. Ta-da! We did it. We have a lighter version of our original. And I'm going to do that again two more times. Now I'm going to check to see if it got, no, it didn't get much much uh, darker. I was worried. Now if you feel like you know you're getting too much ink in that spot, you could take a scrap of grid paper and set that there for um, every other one or something. That'll help build up the ink onto a different layer of grid paper. And there we go. We're going to keep this because we'll use it again. Let's work on this next card. So on this version of the card, I noticed that the, um, the side share showed off both uh, little ends here. So I flipped it over because I wanted to make sure that I didn't see that um, separation. And this is the front of the card. I used three small yellow rhinestones, one small clear, and one large clear. And just kind of eyeballed where these would go. They may not be exactly in the same spot as my finished one. Oh, these are a little squished together more. And started up a little higher but that's okay it doesn't matter they're not <laughs> the person who gets the card is not going to be able to compare right and that is my kit version versus my version with the extra stamp set added in i had used this stamp for the kit version so i told you we would use it one more time so i just brought in my my stamp radius one more time we're going to place this piece right in here we'll use that joy stamp on this other rectangle. It seems to be the one that fits inside this rectangle the best. And we'll go ahead and work on this next card.
Now, joy of joys. <laughs> We do not need to um, invest in a stamp set that has images because the images don't matter no matter what language you understand or speak. And so we're going to grab our branch image now. Mount that onto one of our D-sized blocks, bring in our ink. And we're going to stamp our branch image a couple times on here, just like the kit instructs. So one coming up this way, and one a little bit lower over here. And then this piece, we'll just take the dimensional backing off. That one's just going to set right there over where all of the branches come together. So it kind of cleans it up and makes the messiness disappear. Add that to the front of the card with your seal adhesive. And then we have a hole at the very top there. And I thought that would be a great place for a little bling. So we're going to grab one of our small pink rhinestones and just add that right in there like that. So that is the version I did with the extra stamp set. This is the version I did with the stamp image that comes in the English version of the kit. And since we're using that branch image, we might as well do this next card, which also includes it. So for this card, I'm going to stamp that branch image three times. We'll start it off to the left, like that, kind of in the lower left. And then we'll ink it up and stamp it up, almost vertical right here. And then the next one will go right in between. Well, sort of in between. Like that. This piece will go right over the top. So I'm going to add that by placing a little bit of seal on a few of these leaves. And if you prefer to use like multi-purpose liquid glue or something, that might be easier to apply to all of these smaller spaces. So before I place this down, I'm going to also grab my sentiment piece, which is going to kind of be positioned here. And I'm going to tuck this leaf where it looks like it will show off the best, uh, the branch image back there. All right, we have a small space again. What are we going to stamp in there? Oh, and did you notice? Look at that. I didn't even look. So now we can see both the front and the back. <laughs> oh, well, if it bugs you, trim it off. I'm going to leave it. We're going to use the Seasons Greetings again. So we'll grab that stamp image. And we'll ink up the word Seasons. And on this idea, I was thinking maybe we just put this on upside down. So we put it right over the top because it's a small piece of paper. And just kind of make sure that it's in line with the bottom of this word. And press it. And that worked out pretty well too. Okay, you have two sides to that. So if you mess up, you can always flip it over or you can use the stamp positioner. But that worked. Okay, let's clean this stamp off. And we'll stamp the word greetings down in this lower right area, like so. Then for this one, which we were going to put right here, we can add just a little bit more um, color. So before I actually place it down with a dimensional, I'm going to add some seal across here. And we're going to pick up this fun little scallop border piece like that. And now I'm going to flip it over and put some dimensionals on the back side. If you're worried about your dimensional, um, you're worried about this adhesive up here, you can cut a long piece of dimensional and just put that right over that area. And now we can place that in our position, our area that we were going to place it before. Seasons Greetings, and I'm going to take this six inch piece of twine, make a 
little bow out of it. And this is where the adhesive in the kit comes in super handy when you've had when you've got these tiny little bows that you want to add. So I'm going to take and apply a glue dot here, pull pull off the backing. I'm going to sort of roll it towards itself so it's slightly smaller. And add our fun little bow from our twine. The last thing is just to add a few rhinestones. And here is the finished version of that card compared to the kit card. For the kit card I used this small stamp special delivery. The seventh card also involves the white card base and this time when I give it a good crease I'm going to figure out what the front and the back is. There we go. That's the back side. <laughs> we will add this to the front and we're just going to tape this directly on with our seal adhesive. And I'm placing this about a quarter of an inch from the top. Okay, next we're going to add the presents. And the presents, you'll, you'll recall, I did cut away from the top of the automobile. So there's a little bit of color there, but we're going to cover that up when we place this piece on here. Um, if there's any on the outside edges that are bugging you, like it just did me, I'm going to clean that up just a bit here. Okay, so let's add that and we're not going to place it down completely with adhesive all the way to corner to corner because we're going to tuck something underneath those corners. So this is just going to come right to, and it looks like I did not get this straight. Hang on, let me do that again. There we go. <laughs> all right, so we're going to add this right to the center like that with our presence touching the base of the crumb cake layer. This piece we're going to wrap around. It is 12 inches long and it does have a little bit of an overlap because remember our cardstock was 11 inches long. So we have a slight overlap in there so you don't really need a full, um, full 12 inches of this. It is going to get covered up. Remember, we're going to bring this in. So I'm just going to set down one end in that spot and the other end right next to it in that spot. And then just to protect it and keep it in that spot, we're going to put a dimensional there for now to hold it. Okay, next, um, let's grab this piece. Now this piece is not going to get stamped on this time. This time we're going to cut into the end about an eighth of an inch and then go from corner to that center, corner to that center, like that. And we'll do that on each side. And if this is difficult, you can do one side, cut it in half, line it up, and then cut it again using the first one as a guide because we are basically cutting this in half. So what I meant by that is if you need, you can use your good one as a guide and cut using that. But we're going to flip these over now and we're going to put adhesive on the back side of each. And then we're going to tuck them underneath the lower portion of the presents, just a tad. Okay. Next, we'll go ahead and peel this off and add our scallop circle right here. And we'll bring back that ho 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 that we had from our Santa Santa's delivery stamp set because this definitely looks like something that Santa would deliver. Lots of presents. And then for embellishing, we'll use our rhinestones. I'm using two large pink and one small pink. Here is that finished version and here is the kit version. So I'm bringing back this um, joy stamp and I'm just going to ink it up onto our positioner here. Stamp it down in the middle of a circle. I had an extra one because I changed my mind on this card. That might be a little bit better 
for our finished image. If you have either of those two stamp sets, though, you would have a choice. <laughs> the last card involves our long crumb cake piece. Let's add the center. And now we're going to use these pieces just as guides right now. We're not actually going to add them to the card with any sort of adhesive. We're going to bring in another image that comes in this kit, and it's the present image. I think I, I want to put my car so it's about a half of an inch from the left edge and a half of an inch from the bottom here. So then we'll bring in our ink and we'll stamp our present just above the car. So what I want to do is grab my car, hover my present, pull my car away and stamp. So that way I am not getting my, my the top of my car inked up. So now that I have one, I'm going to stamp another one. It's just going to be connected to the right corner, upper right corner of the other one, but tilted slightly. And then this one will get stamped right above it. We'll just angle it a different way just for difference there. And that one's going to get connected to the upper left corner. And it's going to look like a pile of presents on top of the car while it's driving and you see how they're jiggling so kind of fun right let's add this with dimensionals i changed my mind about where i wanted my dimensionals because i remembered that i wanted to put rhinestones on the headlights of this car so to do that i want to make sure that i don't have something directly under that i'm going to add two large clear rhinestones. And on this one, we're going to stamp another sentiment from this kit that I think is totally appropriate. And it says Santa Claus is coming to town. Because this is a light grid piece of grid paper here, I'm just going to flip this card over here. And then I can center it a little bit better and stamp it down. It's a pretty tight space, but it does fit. That'll get added to this red piece, a little red scalloped layer here. And just a side note, you get four of these yellow rectangles. On the back side, they are white you get eight of these tinier rectangles like this. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So in a sense, you do have an extra rectangle to use um, for each of your three sets. You use three yellows, two, or I'm sorry, one yellow and two whites per set, but then you have these three extra and they're not the same. Two are smaller and one is larger. But that's why I wanted to stamp this on here because it would definitely stamp into a bigger space if that's what you had left. You want to use up all the pieces of your kit, right? Now we'll go ahead and add dimensionals to the back side of this. Super adorable. Here is the other version that I made. Again, this was using the larger rectangle, the back side of the yellow. So either one should work with either sentiment. It's just that this one is a little tighter looking around the sentiments. Very fun. So now I just have one more set to make. I have this version done, this set done, and I can make one more and I'll have 20 for Christmas cards. Yay! And it's crazy how fast they came together too. I hope you enjoyed what I shared today. Remember to refer to the description of my video for a list of supplies I've used. You can also look for a link to my blog post in that description so that you can see close-up photos of what I've created, measurements, and a visual supply list. I'm flying home tomorrow and will be back doing live starting November 23rd. Thank you for allowing me this time to get away and enjoy the sights of Vienna. I hope that you'll join me next week at 11 a.m. Central Time on November 3rd, 2022 for my next live paper crafting class. In the meantime, have a great week 
And now I'd like you all to go and stamp your art out. Bye-bye.